Welcome back. Today's video is all about landing your first role in cybersecurity. Now, it's no secret that the field in general has become more competitive, but whether you're just starting out or looking to pivot from something like development or help desk into a cybersecurity focused role, then I'm going to break down not only some general tips for breaking into the field, but also offer some role specific advice for those of you who are eyeing up positions in penetration testing, maybe you wanting to become a SOC analyst or explore the realms of GRC. Managing privileged access is one of the toughest challenges in cybersecurity today. Every organization needs a way to seamlessly secure and manage access to critical resources like credentials, servers, web apps, databases, and workloads. But it's tough with today's environments that have both legacy platforms and modern cloud infrastructure. And that's where today's sponsor Keeper comes in with Keeper Pam. I've thoroughly tested Keeper myself and it's impressive. The platform is intuitive, powerful, and fits seamlessly into any tech stack. Keeper Pam gives you complete visibility, security, and control over every user and device in your organization. And whether you're working across multi-cloud environments or on-prem systems or remote workloads, Keeper Pam has you covered with features like passwordless access to your infrastructure, even on machines that don't natively support it, automatic password rotation to lock down service accounts, managed privilege sessions across any protocol, and eliminating standing privileges with just-in-time access. Whether it's managing privileged sessions, tunneling into SSH clients and database management tools, or securing multi-cloud environments, it simply works. Keeper are FedRAMP and StateRAMP authorized, ISO certified, zero knowledge, and the list keeps going on. If you want to find out more, then head over to keeper.io forward slash TCM or check out the link in the description below. If you enjoy the video, then don't forget to like and subscribe and let's dive in. So first up, let's talk about why cybersecurity is so popular these days. With so many breaches making the headlines, executives being scared of the unknown and of course embarrassment, and organizations realizing the high cost of reputational damage, the demand for skilled cybersecurity professionals has been booming for years now. But of course, cybersecurity isn't just one job though it seems that way when we see job descriptions list every skill in existence as a requirement. But of course, there are a broad spectrum of roles. And even with the same titles being used, jobs can vary from organization to organization because every company's security maturity and requirements and culture is different. And I think that's one of the reasons why the fundamentals are so important because wherever you land a role, you're going to need some flexibility and to be able to pick up new skills on the fly. So with that in mind, today I'll be trying to focus on some general advice and then we'll zoom into a few specific roles like pen testers and SOC analysts and GRC. So whether you're a tech enthusiast who loves a good challenge or someone who's really into the strategic side of risk and compliance, there's a path for you. So let's start with some general tips that apply no matter which cybersecurity role you're after. Now it's worth taking a moment to say that I am biased more towards technical roles, but even non-technical ones require skills that can be built by working on projects. So keep that in mind if you're looking for something that's more GRC based. So cybersecurity in general is a field that values practical skills just as much as theoretical knowledge. So making sure that you're comfortable with the fundamentals is really, really important. And I'll talk more about what these are for specific roles later on. Certifications are also a somewhat controversial topic within the field, and while certs are not everything, having a recognized certification is a real boost to your CV or resume. I think that for anyone who is seriously considering entering the field, getting a cert is going to help you land a lot more interviews. And you don't need to go nuts here. Certs are kind of a diminishing returns. Once you've got a couple, then unless there's a good reason to chase more, for example, maybe you need the QSA certification for PCI DSS auditing, I personally think your time is best spent elsewhere on other projects or research. But to begin with, it's 
it's good to get one or two out of the way early. Now, theory is great, but you won't survive long in cybersecurity without being hands-on. So creating your own home lab, participating in capture the flag competitions, or trying out platforms like Hack the Box and Try Hack Me are a really good way to build some solid skills. Not only do they give you practical experience, but they also make for great talking points in interviews. Networking is also important and cybersecurity is as much about who you know as what you know. And if you can, join an online community and attend their online events and go to things like meetups or conferences if possible. Networking can really open doors to opportunities that you might not otherwise find. And finally, I've said this many times before, so we won't linger here for too long, but competence and even mastery of anything in life comes with consistency. So don't overwhelm yourself and try to do something manageable each day. We all have different lives and responsibilities, so figure out what works best for you. All right, now let's break things down for specific roles, and I'm going to give you some hopefully helpful tips for three major paths in cybersecurity. So pen testing roles, SOC analyst roles, and GRC. And just before we dive in, I do want to answer the most common question that I get, and that is, how do I get started in XYZ, insert job role name here? And honestly, the answer is to take a beginner-friendly course. It's going to give you a lot of core knowledge that you'll need and also help you to understand where to go once you're done. There's no secret other than putting the work in, but with that in mind, let's take a look at what we can do to lean into specific areas. So first up, let's look at how we can steer ourselves towards a role in penetration testing. For skills in pen testing, you do really need to have a good understanding of networking, scripting, tools, and how different systems interact together. Getting a home lab set up and becoming familiar with as many technologies as possible, both from an offensive perspective, for example, attacking Active Directory, but also as utilities, like how to tunnel over SSH or live off the land is really important. And you can also start to look at some of the popular training platforms like Hack the Box and Try Hack Me after you've finished your entry level course, but also reading write-ups from different sources is a really good way to gain insights and experience too. For your CV, make sure that it highlights your hands-on projects, and if you can, try to get at least one certification on there. This is going to help you land a lot more interviews, as I mentioned before, and for me, I like to see things like links to GitHub or personal blogs, and these give you a lot more talking points again during an interview. Moving on to those of you who want to lean into monitoring, instant response, threat detection, and maybe even threat hunting, let's talk about how to get started in a SOC analyst role. So as a SOC analyst, your day-to-day -day involves monitoring networks, analyzing logs, responding to incidents. So familiarity with SIEM tools is crucial. And that means if you can, make sure to get some hands-on practice. A lot of vendors offer free trials or community editions, or we can simply use open source tools. And so getting started here is fairly straightforward. And of course, there are also many training platforms available these days. For your CV, emphasize your hands-on projects with log analysis, scene tools, and talk about how you can bring value to the team with maybe something like automation and scripting. And if you've set up a lab environment or participated in relevant workshops or boot camps, make sure that those details stand out too. Now, for those of you who are drawn to the strategic and policy making side of cybersecurity, let's talk about governance, risk, and compliance. And GRC is all about ensuring an organization's cybersecurity policies meets regulatory standards and that risk is managed effectively. The role often requires strong communication skills, a grasp of risk assessment, and of course, a thorough understanding of regulatory frameworks. Now, while technical skills are important, for GRC roles, soft skills such as communication, report writing, and the ability to work with various departments are equally crucial. And I think that 
those that work in technical roles could actually learn a lot from working more closely with GRC practitioners from this perspective, as communication is a big weakness we see across the board in general cybersecurity. Now, if you want to highlight your CV, then make sure to put the experience you have in policy writing, risk assessments, or audit participation in there. And it's also a good idea to mention any projects or roles where you've contributed to improving an organization's security posture through governance and compliance efforts. Now that we've gone over some of the main points for each role, let's talk about how to present yourself to potential employers. Your CV should clearly highlight your certifications, hands-on projects, and any personal experience that you've gained, whether through projects, internships, or even freelance work. And as I briefly mentioned before, links to things like GitHub, your blog posts, or online portfolio are useful as well. But let's talk about social media. Things like LinkedIn can be a useful platform to help reinforce your personal brand. And even if you're not posting regularly, a lot of interviewers will check your profile. So at the very least, make sure that it's up to date. Now, with regards to online communities, personally, I think everyone should try to participate at least a little bit in some kind of online community. And your best bet is to find a Discord server that you vibe with and contribute from time to time. You're going to meet people, learn things, and also create opportunities. And the biggest thing that I regret early in my career is simply being a lurker. I never really interacted much with anyone online or any online communities, but now that I am more active, I really see the benefits. My general advice is that if you don't like just chatting or being in a general topic, then join a community event where the conversation is more easily focused and exchanged, like an online CTF. And then you don't need to worry about small talk or asking general questions. You can just talk about the events at hand and that makes interaction generally a lot easier. So now that you've been building your skills and your CV is starting to look like it's tailored to a cybersecurity role, let's talk about interview preparation. Employees now are a little bit more demanding than they used to be and of course they want to see that not only do you have the technical ability but also the ability to communicate clearly and problem solve and work well within a team so luckily you can easily practice this by explaining your projects and the rationale or approach you took to someone who doesn't work in the field and if you stumble over your explanation or they don't have a clue what you're talking about then you probably need to practice more this happens a lot during interviews as well. The number of people that I've asked to explain cross-site request forgery to me only to get back a kind of ballpark answer that's somewhat correct really amazes me. And the funny thing is, is that with some individuals, I know that they know the answer and that sometimes they are skilled web app pen testers, but are just terrible at explaining things, which is an important skill. On the other hand, something to keep in mind is that sometimes people will understand the attack, but they don't understand why the attack works or the behavior and weaknesses of web applications in general. And this is really important because once you go past the basics and you run into more complex bugs or situations or questions at interviews, if you don't understand the underlying behavior, you'll simply miss out on things. So make sure that you understand the fundamental attacks at a really low level and that you're able to explain them. Make sure to adapt your CV to each role as well, of course. And if you're applying for a pen testing position, emphasize your hands-on skills and lab work. For SOC roles, highlight your experience with SIEM tools and incident response scenarios and have answers for uh, if this happens, what do you do? And for GRC, make sure that your understanding of policies and understanding of compliance frameworks is really on point. Employers usually like candidates who demonstrate a passion for continuous learning, but also those that can demonstrate skills that would be useful to them on day one, like the ability to automate processes, the willingness to put on awareness classes or teach non-security engineers about security or sharp communication skills that can help the team work more closely with maybe other internal teams where they don't have the best of relationships. 
these kinds of things are going to really help you stand out from the crowd. One of the most exciting and challenging aspects of cybersecurity is that there are always new things to learn. Even after landing a job, you really need to have a growth mindset and somehow balance the need for continuous development along with everything else. Some easy ways to do this are to follow blogs, listen to podcasts, and of course, join online communities, but we should also try and at least know what new technologies are coming and going in the field. Even if we don't get hands-on experience with everything, understanding what they're used for and why they exist is also pretty useful. So ideally, you can make some time for your skill development at work so that you don't just burn out working all week and then studying all weekend, but even if it's just a little bit each day, let's say 30 minutes, you're going to see that you develop your skills consistently over time. And here, as I always say in pretty much every video that I make, consistency is really key over everything else. And that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful and I will catch you next time.